Good evening, and welcome to First Thursdays at the Marin County Law Library. Um, we're delighted to have you here tonight, and as you know, this is a continuing program where we attempt to get community organizations to come and speak about the programs that they operate and how they might assist our patrons at the law library. This idea originally came from our Lawyers in the Library program, and what we found is oftentimes people had questions that went we beyond whatever legal issue initially brought them to us. We found that there were situations where people needed assistance in the community, both legally and sometimes um, other forms of support. Over two years ago, we began this program, and at the time we started, we actually had people coming into the library, which was a thrill, because not everybody at that moment walking through the door had an immediate legal problem. But what they did have was an interest in community service that we were attempting to introduce the public to. We started way back then with somebody from the Public Defender's Office. Since then, we've had a lot of providers in this county, including Marin Community Clinics, the Food Bank, um, Ritter Center. What's interesting about this is that many of them actually had their springboard from the group that comes to us tonight. As we get into this program, you will begin to see how interactive and how key Community Action Marin has been in our community. Before we get started, I'd like to take a moment and with the Law Library extend a fond farewell and a thank you to our former law librarian. Lori Valla Olson left us to assume a position in Southern California. We'd like to take a moment to thank her and also to thank another member of the staff who left us, Robert Carrington. These are folks that have worked with us for a number of years. They made contributions that have been felt strongly throughout the law library. They also helped us during this difficult time during our semi-closed state during COVID. We wish both of them the best of luck. We wish them good health and happiness, and we thank them sincerely for all of the work they did. At the same time, we're fortunate to be welcoming back and in a new capacity, our new law librarian director, Stephen Richards. Stephen returns to us. We are so grateful to have him and we already feel the energy he brings with him. I'd also like to thank Steve Feller, who during this period of time during COVID has been steadfast, been helpful behind the scenes and helped us keep the programs that we kept up going. We welcome and value all of our staff, and we hope that you will take an opportunity as time goes on to get to know all of our staff. These are folks that can be helpful, they can steer you in the right direction, and most of all, they give a welcoming face to the law library. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, we're welcoming Community Action Marin tonight. May I tell you that one of the things that impressed me most when I was looking into this group and learning more about them myself was the director in an interview in a film that you too can find on YouTube called Community Action Together described working here at Community Action Marin as her dream job. Her staff is much the same as they talk about the work that they do. It's with enthusiasm. It's with energy. Another video that you can take a look at features Chris Miranda, who is the Safety Net Services, um, I believe, director. And something compelling came across in a, in a short video that he was in. He talked about people that come with an immediate need. They may come for Safety Net Services for rental assistance, but before they leave, they may get a referral for PG&E assistance or child care or career coaching. What this says to me is this is a program that looks holistically at the needs of our community. I cannot think of a more important type of outreach than someone who looks at the whole person and the whole family. This organization 
was founded in 1966 with an initial $40,000 federal grant. This grant came out of the Economic Opportunity Act of 1964 and the resulting community action movement. Programs were implemented to provide services to help move low-income Americans closer to self-sufficiency. How did this program work out? In 1967, the Marin County Board of Supervisors designated Community Action Marin as the county's official anti-poverty agency, and they had a mandate to work to eliminate the causes and consequences of poverty in Marin County. We're proud to have them here tonight. We're proud to have this unique individual who is CEO of the program, Chandra Alexander, who comes with a very, very unique background, both as a teacher both, both as an advocate and for somebody who can honestly say they found their dream job. May I take a moment to welcome her and to thank her for, after a long and busy day, coming to speak to us tonight. Chandra, thank you so much. Thank you, Denise. I'm so delighted to be here. And I think you have just set the stage so incredibly well for partnership and the intention of so much of what we at Community Action Marin seek to do, which is relate and relate strongly and build a base of trust from which we can launch into community engagement, resilience, strength. During this time of moving, we hope, into recovery, a stronger economy for each and every one of us and taking steps with one another in partnership toward greater racial and economic justice. So thank you for the welcome. I'm delighted to be here. And what I'd like to do is share a little bit more with you about who we are, what we do. Denise has provided a, a bit of a launching pad for me because she's shared so much of the history of community action. I'll tell you a little bit more, but why don't I share my screen? I'm gonna do that now. and introduce the work that we do each and every day. So I wanna make sure you can see that. You're good? Okay, great, fantastic. So thank you. The work of community action here in Marin County across the entire county reflects a national movement to help people and change lives. We are committed, as Denise said, to alleviating the causes and consequences of poverty. Each and every day, we are providing a hand up for people to achieve self-sufficiency and we hope their greatest dreams. It's a community, as I said, that really starts from a place of understanding our human connection, the importance of deep and trusted relationships that center care and strength, honesty, transparency. Those are the values that guide us toward heartfelt spaces that enable justice to happen. And so what I'd like to do is Stephen is going to share our first video. I've got two for you. This one's just over a minute. And it tells a little bit of the story of the work from the, the perspective of one of our community members. My name is Kelly McMains. I'm living on Welch Street. It's a beautiful complex in San Rafael. It's like tucked back and it's super peaceful. It was freshly painted before I got in there. Brand new carpet. I'm like, this is really happening. You'd think after six and a half months it would wear off, but it hasn't. I was raised in Bolinas and um, I was there for a good 22 years, I think. Divorce happened, so I decided to live in my truck. So I did that for a number of years. And then um, my truck broke down, so then I became homeless homeless. I was homeless homeless for five years. I was a gardener and a chef. I had my own business, fully professional. The market crashed, we lost everything. Everybody was struggling, you know. But they saved my life. Community Action Marine. <laughs> I got my case manager, and she put me up in hotels. I pretty much just had the clothes on my back. So she got me clothing vouchers and, you know, toiletries. She kept telling me, too, like, I'm not ever going to let you go back to the streets. Like, 
skipped a word too. Just this pure dedication, like not giving up, you know, like really in your corner, really there for you. Thank you for sharing that. Now you might have noticed on the screen, you could see that that's a sneak preview, right? We haven't quite launched that yet, but I wanted to make sure that I was able to share that with you. And you could start to feel the work and the impact and the power of what it means to have people who are in your corner. So thank you for that. We're gonna, the next slide. Uh, let me talk a little bit about the agency to give you a sense of the breadth and depth of who we are as people. We come from all walks of life, all backgrounds, different demographics, socioeconomic status, races, religions. We are Marin County. The community in its diversity and its beauty is the people who are stepping up to give a hand up to people in need at a time perhaps of change or uncertainty or unexpected emergency. And they're here doing the work that's hard and difficult each and every day because they care and they believe in the potential of every person to have access to what they need to survive and thrive. The agency is over 200 staff. We are over 200 people strong and truly we are because of the representation that you see in part on the screen, but we are truly reflective of the heart of Marin County. The vision that we have is that all of us can have an opportunity to achieve a life of dignity and of respect. The kind of equality that we want to see is where opportunity isn't lessened because of the zip code we were born in or raised in or the education that we had access to or didn't, we're seeking to not just reduce barriers, but to eliminate those barriers to ensure that everyone across the county can live a life replete with dignity and respect. And as Denise mentioned, we have been around for a while. The Economic Opportunity Act is one of the core drivers of our focus on economic justice, the war on poverty. Lyndon B. Johnson on the right-hand side of our screen here. And the other strand of our DNA, if you will, the heart of our hearts is the work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the Civil Rights Act, also of 1964. Those are the twin strands of racial and economic justice that drive us today. We have been in the community since 1966 for over 50 years and really working to help populations, people living in, in poverty, to attain self-sufficiency and get to their dreams. So from that long uh, uh, past, uh, the work that we've done for over 50 years, every day our direct services make it possible to achieve well-being. We have so many services that we offer, but those services wrap around the individual. It's people at the heart, at the core, their strengths, their hopes, their needs. We seek to meet them where they are, and we seek to help get them to where they want to be. The direct services are partnered with, paired with advocacy to change systems and structures. So we break down the, the barriers, the challenges that get in the way of what's fair and sustainable in service to better outcomes for all of us. Each and every day, the work that we do across all 200 plus of our staff is really in service to lasting change that we can sustain over time. The county's uh, anti-poverty agency, that's Community Action Marin. We have so many incredible partners in the county. Many of them you know, many of them, as Denise said, we have helped to birth. It's been an incredible process and awareness that we carry that we have this legacy of generating incredibly important, powerful, competent, successful organizations helping to lead people onto pathways to thriving. One of the beautiful things about Community Action Marin, we are the largest nonprofit social services provider in the county. We are part of a nationwide network of over 1,100 community action agencies. 
And I'll tell you a little secret before I became CEO of Community Action Marin, just about four years ago, not quite, but coming up on four years ago, I had never heard of community action and i had been in the nonprofit sector for a very long time. So it surprised me to learn that community action was a thing and such a powerful thing birthed incredible steps that the government, the federal government wanted to take toward racial and economic justice. So here I came in at a time when just before the pandemic, we were seeking to make those strides even more powerful. And then with the pandemic, with January 6th, with the, um, the call for racial justice and the murder of George Floyd, we saw an incredible opportunity to step up and, and step forward. And we did that in partnership across the country, a very, very powerful, uh, powerful position. Uh, and again, opportunity for us to continue to strengthen approaches to social justice. So we are, as I mentioned, a very large agency. We operate across many different sites across the county. Most of those sites are to provide child care services. We know that in Marin, like many areas across the country, we're hearing about the need for housing and child care to enable people to get to work, to go to school, to be able to achieve their success. And we make that happen across the county. We serve about 7,000 households or 20,000 people every year. And as I mentioned, our services wrap around the individual to meet them where they are. We provide basic needs. That's our safety net services. And that includes things like rental assistance and helping to make mortgage payments if you're wanting to um, uh, keep your house to put food on the table and not have to make a choice between paying your rent. Most of our, our folks of, of low income, particularly communities of color in Marin County are our communities of low income. And we don't want those choices between rent and putting food on the table and feeding your children to be ones that anyone should have to make. So we focus on making sure that they can have that, that blanket of support. Uh, we also support people with mental health issues and needs and challenges and get them to thriving. We provide peer support services. That means that many of the people who serve our communities' mental health needs are people who have mental health challenges or have had in our, our pathways to recovery uh, with their mental health uh, plans and really can help support the system uh, and the individual, of course, but the system in partnership with clinicians and other providers. Children and Family Services, I mentioned the child care support that we provide, and that is free and affordable child care. We are the Head Start grantee in Marin County, and we provide comprehensive child care services to make sure that families can achieve their dreams, that again, parents can get to work or to school, and that they can feel safe and confident knowing that their children are cared for, they have a safe home away from home, and they're getting the early education, high quality early education that they deserve. Economic justice for us is a comprehensive approach to helping people through one-on-one -on -one coaching achieve um, their financial health and wellness. Sometimes that looks like financial coaching, budgeting, uh, working on increasing credit scores, getting out of debt, one-on-one -on -one support at any income le level can be really, really helpful. We are finding now more and more people aging into poverty, having to make a choice between staying housed and well, taking, being able to get medication, for example. And we want to be able to ensure that with whatever amount of money people have coming in, we can budget accordingly and get what they need. So we're really working one-on-one -on -one with individuals to support them through those services. We also provide career coaching and counseling and job training. The way that we do it is incredibly important. I mentioned we try to wrap around the entire individual or family with whatever they need. And so across all of our ser services, we apply a whole family approach. That's uh, often called a two-gen approach from children to parents to older adults that across the, the life cycle, across the spectrum that a family may have, an individual may have for their life cycle, we are meeting them. And it's not only our agency services, but of course it's that trusted relationship to be able to have a warm handoff to a partner agency. We partner strongly with many across the county. For example, Legal Aid of Marin. We ourselves don't provide legal services, but Legal Aid of Marin is an incredible partner 
on this journey to help people get out of um, challenges and onto pathways to self-sufficiency. So I want to pause here and invite our second video to be played because this is going to give you a deeper, richer sense of what a whole family approach looks like and means through the eyes of our community. So I'll stop sharing. Marin County is an incredibly beautiful county. We have lots of open spaces and parks. Many surveys put Marin County as one of the top wealthiest counties in the country. But we have what I would call an invisible Marin. Poverty can look like an older adult or a young family or service workers and landscapers and grocery clerks. People who make a choice between paying rent or putting food on the table. And most of the people in Marin County who are living in poverty are people of color. We are Marin County's largest nonprofit social services agency, and we work every day to help alleviate the causes and consequences of poverty. The work that we do here at Community Action Marin is to give people access to what they need to get to self sufficiency and onto their dreams. For parents, one of the biggest needs that they have is childcare, right? Or after school program, because they need to work hard in order to pay rent. We provide free childcare for low income families here in Marin County through the program of Head Start. For those new parents, this is a great opportunity for them to learn about the education system and empowering them to be part of the community. Marine Community Action provides to my child education. They provide to my child meal. I go to school five days a week. I'm studying nursing assistant. When I go into school, I'm not worried. I know my child is in safe. I know my child is in good health. For me, it's a big support. Action Marin does a lot. We serve breakfast, lunch, and snack every day um, to hundreds of kids. And we know from surveys we've done in the past that our families experience a lot of food insecurity and that the support that they get at the school is extremely important to them. ¿Sabes qué son esos? Mira. Having that security of not having any trauma related to food is extremely important from a young age. So we do all that we can to support families so they don't have to go through making tough choices about food. Folks have a selective vision when it comes to poverty. They see what they want to see, but they don't have to think about it. We do provide a whole family approach where you may come in for rental assistance and end up leaving with a referral for PG&E assistance, child care, career coaching, knowing that there's somebody there for you and providing that safety net, that blanket of like, you're not alone, can create an impact in their life. Community Action Marin's Mental Health Department has peer education, we have crisis planning, and we're also providing training and advocacy. Mental health challenges really are universal. I mean, they can affect anybody of any income, any gender. The main goal is to empower the people we're working with so that they're able to advocate for themselves eventually. I think Community Action Marin, to me, it's for the people. With the care teams, we're doing mobile outreach for the homeless folks. Most of them, they need a lot of help, but they won't go to the office space. So we'll bring the services to them. So we become the bridge. Let's jump right into it. I'm a volunteer financial coach. A lot of my coaching clients come and they have kind of some shame around money. 
They want to get control over their finances. I love this chance to give back and to give people a different vision of what it would be like to build wealth so that you can take care of your family. Community Action Marin is a very key partner for us at the foundation. Going back to 1966, they have been at the heart of addressing inequities in the community and they play a key role in many countywide collaboratives. Since they've been doing it for so long, they have a track record of what this work needs to look like. Marin County is very, very committed to being in support of one another. Often people don't know how they can make a difference. Our agency offers a real opportunity for people to know their neighbors, to hear stories. So it's about that connection that we feel as people living in the same place with so many of the same aspirations and hopes for our children and for tomorrow. What we're trying to create is a connection for people who care to come together and make a difference so that the future will be brighter for all of us. Wonderful, thank you so much. That last one on the slide said, tell a friend. And that's part of what we're doing here tonight is telling a friend, so thank you for that. Um, I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen. And if you have questions or questions or ideas or comments you're thinking about, I would suggest use the chat, make sure that you uh, feel free to put those down and that way we can we can remember them and, and we can get to them. So. Uh, one of the most recent things that we did with our food justice work was engage our community over the holidays in particular. The holiday season and people coming together around food and breaking bread is such an important part of our culture. And we wanted to express the importance of good food for all of us. We know that there are food deserts in Marin. People don't have access to local, healthy, organic, nutrient-dense food. So we created a video, I'm not gonna share it with you now, but I wanna make sure that you know that it's on our website at camarin.org. I'll put that in the chat in a little bit, but you can watch that video. We created a discussion guide, one in English, one in Spanish. We wanted to give more community members access to information. It wasn't just about our work, it was about all of the ecosystem that it takes in Marin to provide good food for everyone who lives here. So that's beyond what people might be able to get if they have uh, the resources, the money to be able to get good, healthy, nutritious food at, for example, Whole Foods, but it's really for the production farms and the um, organic local far farmers markets and people have access to public benefits like HealthFresh that enable to them to get what they need. And we spread the word in our schools and with our parents and across the county to help people have conversations. What would it mean um, if every one of us didn't have to worry about putting food on the table, if we couldn't, if we didn't have to go hungry, if no child had to be hungry. So we invited people to take five minutes for food and have a conversation. What does food justice mean to you? So that's a question I'll leave you with and you can consider. So looking ahead, the work that we're seeking to do really is to take us forward through the next 50 years. We've been around for a while. We don't know that we're gonna be responsible for ending poverty, but we know that we're gonna do everything we possibly can do to change the systems and structures that have caused it or made it worse in some cases. Um, and we know that right now in a increasingly post pandemic, we hope we're starting to see maybe the road ahead. We're looking at economic recovery. We're looking at pathways forward. We're looking at you know, increased, increased stability for individuals and families. We're looking at um, increased mental health services. We're really looking at helping people stay connected and well um, and financially stable. So if I had a vision that I would express with you tonight, it's that we have an opportunity in Marin County, given our affluence, we are one of the five most affluent counties in the country. We can become, by leveraging our resources, we can become a proof point for what is possible when you center people and opportunities and access. Social justice can make fairer outcomes for all who live, work, play, and serve here. 
that would be my, my greatest hope and dream. We do want to support a resilient Marin for everyone. For us, a focus on uh, increased housing navigation services and rental assistance, workforce development. We want to grow from where we are now at about a $20 million budget to about 25 million by increasing all you and all of those services that we do, we do a lot, but increasing service delivery, diversifying our revenue and having more flexibility to build the capacity of the community that is our staff as well through training and education uh, and more robust professional development. So lots that we do, lots more that we wanna do for the road ahead. We can't do it alone. We have lots of people who are part of our network of funders and partners. A lot of them are on the screen, a lot of them aren't, but you probably recognize a lot of these organizations. It takes a village, it really does, to talk about what does the intersection of social service and public health and civic engagement and roads to self-sufficiency and equity and justice for all of us look like. It really does take all of us. So I'm excited to share that we have many wonderful partners you've heard from. Jonathan Logan at Marine Community Foundation, a great supporter of ours, but we are looking for more partners and I'm delighted to be with the Law Library tonight and all of you as a new partner. So thank you for that. Um, COVID took a lot. I'm not gonna go into all of what we did. I wanna make sure we have time for questions, but really what I'm trying to highlight on this slide is, remember I mentioned those two strands of DNA, uh, you know, really the work of, of racial justice and, um, of economic opportunity. The idea is that it really does take getting people stable in order to help us move toward justice. So direct services will continue to be incredibly important to us, but so too is policy advocacy, the work of changing the systems and how we engage as community and how we hold our mindsets about what does it mean to be poor. And we wanna shift the stories and the narratives um, about poverty in order to make it possible for more people to step up uh, and help and be supportive. So the Canal Policy Working Group was a key partnership across some key Marin County uh, community-based organizations, including Community Action Marin, Legal Aid of Marin, and Canal Alliance, working in partnership with the City of San Rafael, Mayor Kate Collin, uh, and some of her staff, as well as Supervisor Dennis Rodoni, who um, covers the Canal uh, District, prior to redistricting when this all started a couple of years ago, um, most uh, specifically, and really coming together to have honest conversations about what it would take to move the needle, keep people safe and housed. We were able to enact rent freezes and we were able to establish and then extend the eviction moratoria across Marin. So some really important work happening right here uh, in your own backyard. So we're, we're continuing to we're dedicated to and will continue to keep that work moving forward. Um, this is just really a quick note. We on our website talk a lot about what we do, but what is what we do mean in terms of the lives of people? You heard from somebody in that initial opening video. Impact is important. Outcomes are incredibly important. So we publish an impact report every year in the early fall. Um, and that's available on our website as well. And it'll give you a sense of what does it mean in terms of the service? How many people are we able to touch? You saw some of that in the video, but what does it mean to them? How are they feeling about the services, their lives, their progress toward their dreams? And we seek to measure that. And as I said, we're definitely stronger together. So each and every one of you who are on the call tonight, we're listening on the video when you're watching it. It is, I think, a wonderful question to ask What's important to you? How does your passion connect to the work of your community? And how can we lift up all of us so that we have a more vibrant and thriving Marin County? So with that, I wanna thank you and appreciate you for your time and um, the fact that you're part of this conversation. My uh, contact information is there, but I'll also put it in the chat. Thank you so much for having me and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you, Chandra, and it's it's been wonderful learning more about you. Do we have any questions tonight? <laughs> 